I remember back at E3 2013 when EA and DICE announced Mirage Edge Catalyst for the very first time. At the time, they didn't say if it was a sequel or a reboot, they just said, coming when it's ready. I ended up buying the original Mirage Edge just so I can get a better understanding of the world. Now, being that this was in 2013, I wasn't too sure what to expect for the next game. The original Mirror's Edge was a cult classic but far from perfect. I've always loved the Battlefield series from DICE and seeing them work on another Mirror's Edge game made me pretty excited. Unlike the first game, DICE was setting its sights on making an open world game. In this essay, I will talk about the development of Mirror's Edge Catalyst, leading all the way up to the release and the aftermath. Other than the fluid movement, Mirror's Edge is the only franchise that has mastered the first person perspective. The parkour is quick, fast, and smooth compared to most games now. The original Mirror's Edge was ahead of its time with its parkour and its unique gameplay. Mirror's Edge would soon inspire and even be copied by other games like Titanfall 1 and 2, Dying Light 1 and 2, and Brink. Those games have yet to master the parkour elements that Mirror's Edge has mastered so imperfectly. And I say imperfectly because even Mirror's Edge has some big problems of its own. The problems I had with Mirror's Edge Catalyst are the same ones I had with the original one. Its gameplay is better, but also worse in some areas. Faith has a tendency to jump on ledges and platforms without the player doing so. It happens more often than not. Sometimes I'll jump off of a building and I'll tap a button to roll and Faith won't do that action, which makes me fall to my death or hit the floor, slowing down my running process. It's one of the many issues I have with the game. Another good example of this is climbing. Faith can climb on almost any ledge in the game, but sometimes she'll get stuck, not being able to move. Now, this is the game itself, not the player. With the first Mirror's Edge, I felt a lot of weight to Faith and picking up speed was an adrenaline rush. Catalyst still has this feature, but Faith in this game feels lighter and faster. Not saying that it's bad, but it feels like she doesn't have weight whenever she's running or climbing and even fighting. Now the parkour is still a hit and miss, like the story, which I'll talk about later on in the video. I honestly can't imagine what this game is like in VR. Running at top speeds across rooftops is not only a rush, but an experience you don't get from games nowadays. You are truly in sync with Faith and her movements, and you feel everything that is thrown at you. Now, if there's anything I really liked other than the movement, it's the impact. When Faith is running, you can hear her breathing really fast. Whenever she jumps off of a building, you can hear the grafts in her voice right before she lands. You can hear her breathing go from calm to panic within seconds. It made me feel almost as if I was the one running and not Faith. At times, it felt like a rush. It's the little details in this game that make you feel like you're a part of this character, similar to the combat, which is also a hit and a miss. The combat in the game is also an improvement to the original, but still has major problems in the game despite the gameplay being improved. I honestly think the movement needs to be reworked again. This doesn't always happen, but sometimes you have to constantly hit the same buttons whenever it comes to certain enemies. The experience is exhilarating when it works, especially when things are going by fast. The controls weren't hard to learn either considering they were similar to the first game. The game at times forces you to fight in a small arena. At first I thought this was fun, but after a while it became button spamming and very tedious. The runners to my knowledge are supposed to be quick, clean, smooth, and fast. Their goal is to not fight but run. Fighting should be as a last resort. More often than not, the game forces you to fight. Now, if the game had better fighting animations with an easier way to block, dodge, and knock out your enemies, the game's combat would be much better. I like what they tried to do with the combat, but I also feel like they cut a lot out. Some of the finishers in the game seem to be cut with awkward animations happening at the end. Just like the gameplay and combat, the story is another missed opportunity. From reading articles and watching a few interviews online, I don't think Faith got the origin story she deserved. The game kind of dumps you into the middle of the story instead of explaining what happened before. 
but you can read some of this through the comic books. My biggest issue with the story was I wanted to understand why Faith was a runner, how she became this person, and what happened before the events of the game. The game just assumes you know this when in fact you don't. Another big issue with the story is the world building. We hear about events we've never seen or witnessed only for Faith to say, I remember, without the game showing or telling the player what happened. The game should have went for the Assassin's Creed 2 route, where we're introduced to the character at a young age and we take control of them, so over time we see where they came from, how they became this person, and why they do what they do. I'm assuming a lot of the story was either cut or was left on the cutting room floor before release. I also feel like the world doesn't feel lived in. You rarely see other people outside unless they're runners or people in office buildings. The game doesn't do enough to keep the player invested within its world. By the time the game ends, that's it. There aren't any stakes at play that would motivate the player either. The last three missions of the game basically set up the sequel. As much as I like this game and some of the open world, I feel like Mirror's Edge should have went for a more linear sandbox style that was similar to the first game. You can explore the City of Glass, but there's not much to do in it. There's not a lot of history to this world. I wish DICE had more time to finish the game and took more time on the open world. It's almost as if DICE had to cut certain portions of the game world out. There are around 10 districts in the game, but I have to find this out online and not through the end game itself. That's another issue I have with this game. You have to read some of the comic books to understand what's really going on in the story. I think going open world was probably where things went wrong for DICE. Not only that, the game is a prequel slash sequel slash reboot of the first game. I have no idea what DICE meant by that, but that's probably where the problems came from. First and foremost, going open world isn't a bad idea, it's how you handle the open world and what you put into the world. A good example of this is GTA 5 and Red Dead Redemption 1 and 2. The open world in those games are constantly changing and evolves around the player. Not only that, the world revolves around their actions. The player sets in motion the events and in return the world evolves with them. Almost like a living, breathing world. That doesn't happen very often in open world games now. There are some collectibles and side missions scattered throughout the city of glass like metagrids, grid notes, billboards, and some time trials. But again, the game doesn't do much to keep the player coming back. Compared to the trailers, the game is somewhat of a graphical downgrade. It's still a good looking game at the end of the day. The Frostbite engine in some areas is visually stunning. And as a side note, I personally think the grid notes were handled perfectly and offer up replay value because they don't take place within the open world. They require skill and careful thinking, which is something the campaign missions were missing. I really think the grid notes test the player. It gives you multiple ways to get to the objective without one correct path. In my honest opinion, I think there's a future for this franchise. The original Mirror's Edge was able to break boundaries and set a go for itself that other games have tried but stumbled to do what Mirror's Edge did so well. I love this franchise, I adored Catalyst despite its flaws, but who knows what EA and DICE has in stores for this franchise. It saddens me because we may never get another Mirror's Edge game again. Only time will tell. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, like, comment, and subscribe, and thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys out there.